right. <clears throat> I'm ready. Oh, this thing? Yeah, sorry. It gets in the way sometimes. Let me just... So going into the 2020 season, ending off of 2019, there's a few things that we obviously had to take care of. Uh, one of those being uh, just roster mania in general. Whenever the season's over, and even before that, you're wanting to look at, you know, what potential moves you can make. We took a lot of time to reflect on things we did well, things we didn't do well. Obviously with the, the way it ended last year with our record, um, I mean, we wanted to make sure we changed. So we took a lot of time to decide on what things we could change, update, or just simply do better. Because changing everything isn't always the best answer. Sometimes it's just, it's changing specific things. And I think the first step was identifying, you know, what things we felt like we could do better um, as a team, as a whole. And we felt like, you know, OG, Mickey, Timo, we felt like all of them, that it would just maybe be better for both parties if, you know, we looked at other options for everybody. A lot of times people are gonna look for some kind of crazy drama that happened or something, but when in reality, sometimes things just don't work out. Whether it's, you know, people just don't mesh or whatever. And we feel like for all parties involved, for everybody, you know, this it's an opportunity for everyone to grow and, and get better as people. And so we, we definitely think that every person was a great asset last year. They're very valuable individuals, but, you know, we wanted to give them more space to grow. And if that means that it's not, you know, specifically in this roster, you know, then so be it. Let's let's give them a chance, you know, to, to look somewhere else to grow. And so so that opportunity came up and, and, and everyone kind of agreed, you know, and that, that's just kind of how it went. So a lot of people are probably going to wonder um, about the decision to trade OG. Um, you know, when we were talking about this with OG and just with our staff and everything, you know, we we wanted to make sure that both parties were happy. Both us and OG felt like, you know, we wanted to try, you know, a different a different setup. So we wanted to look for someone that has a specific type of, you know, mentality to mesh with certain players on our team. And I wanted to give OG a chance to branch out in another team and, and see how he does. And I know that that, you know, OG wanted to give that a shot too. He's a very outgoing individual. We love OG and, and you know, he did a lot for us and we felt like he, he, was a, he was a good player, but we wanted him to be able to get that opportunity. Um, we respect OG a lot and, you know, both of us agreed, let's try it. Like I said, no major drama. We wanted to give OG a chance to shine. It was a lot of, a lot of work. Uh, I worked with, with Mike, with Errol, like every day I was just checking up on, on free agents, you know, contenders, you know, other teams looking for trades. We got an opportunity to look at Gamsu, who's a very, you know, a very positive individual, a veteran, you know, a, a leader that players can look up to. He's been in esports a long time. You know, has been a staple in esports for years. He's been on League of Legends before Overwatch, and, you know, won an undefeated stage with Boston, then went to the Dragons, brought them from where they were to, to winning a whole stage uh, is incredible. And it just shows the leadership values and the, the experience he has. He's a very positive individual. You know, I think there's not many players like him that have been in esports so long that remain as a very positive, you know, beacon for everybody. And we wanted to bring that kind of positivity, uh, you know, to our team. And we know that he already had pre-existing synergy with Note. He and Note have worked very well together in the past. And having someone that players can look up to with this young roster, I think Gamsu fits as a, as a veteran that players can come and talk to, you know, and learn and grow from. You want structure and you want a player that is a veteran and knows how to handle life outside of the game. And games we provided those things and we felt like you know he'd be a great fit for our roster. With Decay, I think it, he really brings that that next level of mechanical ability. When you look at all of his match footage, you, know, you can't argue that this guy is an, is an incredibly gifted player. He makes very good decisions in game. And we wanted, you know, that kind of explosive type player in the game with us. We feel like that we can provide the support to where, you know, he can be one of those players that you're talking about for All-Star, you know, for, for MVP of, of the season, that he has that kind of potential. When we got that opportunity that Decay was an option, it just made sense. You know, Decay is um, known for being a very gifted player and we really want to see um, about how we can unlock that. 
When looking at our other DPS slot this off season, you know, there was a lot of options out there. And what we wanted was number one, someone with high mechanical skill. Number two, someone that was flexible. And number three, someone that was very vocal. And in all of our talks and everything that we were looking through, um, you know, Doha came forward as a great option. He's a very positive individual. You can tell that he has a lot of fun in his scrims and in his matches, and, and he's a very talented individual as well. I think that Doha's gonna be a star. I feel like he's going to surprise a lot of fans, a lot of people in general. Uh, you know, some people know him in the gauntlet, and the people that do know him know how good he is and how good he is gonna be for us. And the people who don't, uh, I'm excited to show you how, how good he is. He has that kind of potential and, and, and you know, we really want to see it through and, and see how he does. In finalizing our offseason moves, we, you know, decided to also add Crimzo to our roster. And he's been playing with our academy team for quite some time now. And we've kept tabs on him the whole time because we knew that he was a really good up and coming talent, a lot of potential. And I think it shows, you know, you can tell that Crimzo really stands out as a player. He's very mechanically gifted with a lot of potential, but his positivity and ability to adapt is, is probably the biggest factor. He also is a very positive individual. He's a really good teammate, and he definitely just kind of brings the environment up. We knew that adding him would be a pretty seamless fit, and we're definitely looking forward to see how he does in the Overwatch League and how he progresses. I would definitely believe he has a bright future ahead of him. So we made a lot of changes in the off season that we thought would improve our team. I think our fan base has been pretty appreciative of the moves and the roster changes that we've made. And, you know, we're headed into the season with a very different team and that's challenging in, in itself. You know, in many ways, we feel like we upgraded a lot of roster positions and um, overall the senses we've gotten better. Um, but, you know, just making those changes themselves can complicate the chemistry of the team and make it maybe almost a step back and having to recreate a team dynamic and get everybody on the same page. And that's what we're really hard at work on. I'm actually extremely happy with how much we've progressed. And the fact that we're continuing to grow is a very big deal. All the players notice it too, the staff notices it that, you know, we're getting better. Step by step, we're getting better. You know, we're gonna keep working on our communication, but we're also gonna really push the envelope on our strategies and try to find that unique style that, you know, we're aiming for definitely been a lot of work. Uh, definitely it's been quite stressful at times, but at the same time, I know what we've got here and what we're building. And this is something that both myself, Arrow, and the rest of the staff have been really looking forward to creating this culture in Dallas, based in Dallas here, where we can really grow as a team and a family. All in all, it's, it's obviously early days yet, and we've got a lot to go till we're right there where we want to be, but we're working really hard every day. The last two seasons were rough. We, we came into the inaugural season thinking we were going to kick everybody's ass and we, we ate some humble pie, you know, and that's just the way it goes in competition. Everybody's working hard and team dynamics matter. Uh, things can happen in the middle of the season that change everything. I can't tell you if we're going to be the first place team in the league or we're going to be the last place team. But what I do know is that every single person on this team is going to bust their ass to compete and win this year. So uh, shout out to all the Fuel fans who are here to support us no matter what. We're working really hard and we'll never stop. I promise you that.